How's the campaign going? The campaign is going well. Uh, the energy is palpable. People's wallets are hurting. People's spirits are hurting. So they're inquisitive about who is standing up to the trickle-down tyranny we're seeing in Hartford. Uh, going door to door? We're knocking on doors. We're in row eight and on Sunday. Um, we're going to be out canvassing every weekend in every neighborhood that we can get to. Uh, it's a big city to cover. We're all over social media, danielmoresi.com and at danmoresi.ct. For anything you guys want to talk about, your love, your hate, your support. Um, my goal in this election is to let people know that I'm accessible in all forms. It is 2022, so if I can't knock on your door, come to the virtual town square and talk to me and get to know me. I will, am willing to talk to every constituent. And Republican to me means citizen representation, which is why we're here tonight. It's not that parents are necessarily against the idea of letting students have choice and follow their education. The problem is, is they were left out of the conversation. Just like how Bob Duff has left them out of many conversations when he does legislation. And at the crux of it, that's what people want in their representatives. They want to have conversations and they want them to come back home to their districts and have hard conversations, talk through policy. You're gonna have kids now who two years, two years, they were, had remote learning, they were away from their friends, they were away from their teachers that they loved. Their parents are struggling with balancing working from home and going back into the office. And then you have COVID concerns and having to be close from home, especially if a kid has a condition where they can't be around. So a policy like this to be done behind closed doors without parents' input is a dereliction of duty, in my opinion. And that's really why I'm here. I'm not against choice or anything like that. All I am is for conversation. I spoke to you the night you were nominated. So now since then you've been um, going door to door. Besides what's going on here tonight, what other issues have come up uh, that you've uh, heard uh, expressed in your, in your meetings with the individual residents? Well, first, uh, I think it was the Clinton administration that coined it's the economy stupid. I mean, people are hurting. They're worried about what's coming this fall. With the market news coming this week, people lost 30% of their monetary value in their last year. I mean, that's insane. And you have bills like 830G, you have the diesel tax coming in, you have a surplus that they tout that's not really a surplus. What it is is federal COVID money moved over to cover $22 billion in pension liability debt. That's not fair for people who were coming out of a pandemic let, let me break. Yep. Let me just catch this fellow, and then we'll get back to you. Yeah, and we were talking about going door to door and and what you're hearing. Uh, yes, yes. I, I think I left off with it's the economy stupid, but um, yeah, it's two things. It's it's one, you know, it's the wallet. Uh, like I said, people have lost thirty percent of their monetary value, whether it's stocks or anything. Our surplus is fudging numbers. You have Eversource working as a third party tax collector. There. The state's functioning off the sales tax. Our municipalities and our district can only raise revenue through property taxes. So that's only one subset of people who get taxed over and over again. Our small businesses were shut down for a couple years, basically, and they're not getting any relief from the onerous taxation they have, and they're going to have to pay more in health insurance premiums. So all these little things add up, and they create an economic climate of fear. And then when you look around, when you get away from, you know, just the numbers, when you look around, there is a, what I call a visceral feeling that people have that just something is wrong. They see things, development going on in the community that they're not, they didn't necessarily vote for, or didn't know, don't know what it's for. They see traffic continuing to grow. They see crime rising. And it's all coming down from all angles, and it's coming down from Hartford because we have gotten away from the people having representative government. We've gotten away from bifurcating Hartford and our districts. Right now, we have a one-size-fits-all policy, and representatives like Bob Duff try to make the district acquiesce to those policies rather than fighting for what's best for his district. And the people are willing to change because for the first time in their lifetimes, their dinner table is being effective socially, emotionally, and economically. So you're telling me, shorthand, you're telling me in your, in your gut you think you can win this? I think I have a puncher's chance. I absolutely do. And I, I welcome Lisa in the race and any other voices. I believe in free and fair elections. And the people have been stifled long enough. And they need to hear from everyone. And especially from Mr. Duff. You know, he's running 
for his 10th term, 20 years. I mean, you ask anybody on the street, you can't necessarily say he's done anything great for Norwalk. They can't point to it. So he has some questions to answer. And the way he's talked to people over COVID mandates and stuff is unacceptable for any representative. I don't care if you have an R or a D next to your name. They're your constituents. You talk to them like the citizens that they are. And so I think that people are ready for change. I think they're looking for options. And I hope that they understand that Republican doesn't mean a dirty word. It, it, all it means is that I want to stand up for the citizens. And I truly believe that if we want to have a vibrant, libertarian, social town square with choice for everybody, we need a bulwark of conservatism to hold up the parameters and the pillars of our community with integrity so people feel safe, secure, and can pursue their Connecticut dream. So you're going to show up for the debate? I'm absolutely going to show up for the debate. I'll, de I'll debate anywhere. I'll debate on a street corner. But yes, I'm showing up for the debate. I'm looking forward to it. And, you know, I hope everyone shows up and tunes in. And, you know, I, the people of Norwalk deserve to have a real debate, a real election, and real choice. And it doesn't matter the party name next to it. What matters is what those people are going to say and if they're going to fight for the city of Norwalk in Hartford. And I promise that's all I'll do. Good luck again. Thank you, sir.